Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, welcome to the studio, Diane here, I hope everyone's well. Um, today we're going to paint a hair in a snowy landscape. This is the sketch that I did earlier, I've just torn it out of my sketchbook. And um, it's been done mostly with three colours, in fact I think entirely with three colours. And those three colours were alizarin crimson, which is these berries up here, um, burnt sienna for the browns and ultramarine blue for the blue, which together of course makes a nice grey, so for the shadows in the distance and so on, um, that's what we've got there. I'm not quite sure what colour, I think that's just very dilute um, burnt sienna on the sky in the distance there. So I was quite pleased with this composition. And um, so I'm going to do the exact same thing again. And uh, for that reason, I'm going, I've got it here on my light box, um, which is a great addition to any studio. And uh, I quite recommend that if you are expecting a Christmas or a, no, not Christmas, Christmas has just happened, um, birthday present or something, or next Christmas, I suppose. Um, these only cost about $25 and uh, it's a great time saver. So you can do your sketch in your sketchbook and then if it comes out really well and you want to save time and make sure it's going to be exactly the same, then you can just trace it. And what I'm going to do is exactly that. I've got here a piece of paper that I'm going to paint on. I'm not going to stretch this paper and it doesn't need to be a block, pre-glued pre um, uh, block, uh, because of the, which I couldn't, of course, trace using the light box with. Anyway, um, I digress. It doesn't need to be because it's not a wet in wet painting. There is some wet in wet in it where I've added a colour onto a wet area, but it's not a wet in wet painting. A wet in wet painting, strictly speaking, is when you have your paper either taped down or else it's on a board and you allow it to buckle a little bit, but you put water all over the whole thing and then you paint into the wet paper. That's true, pure wet in wet. And we use elements of wet in wet in other paintings where it's just in a small selected area, but that doesn't make it a wet in wet painting. Anyway, so this isn't one of those. This is just an ordinary painting. And this is a piece of um, paper which is called um, Lavis Fidelis. It's made by Arches, who do make more than one kind of paper. And this is a slightly lighter one. This isn't... Um, 140 pounds, it's about 120 or 130 pounds, so it's a little bit lighter. It's very, very good quality paper. You'll love it if you can get hold of it and try it. Um, on one side, it's got a slight texture, which I think you can see there. This camera is my Christmas present. Aren't I lucky? Brand new, top of the line range, iPad, I think iPhone. Hey, and my daughter, Tamsin, she was given uh, one of those watches that turns you into a cyborg. It's bizarre. Oh, she says, my heart rate is 79. Oh my God, what are we going to do now? And look, my ECG says I'm still alive. It's amazing, isn't it? It's really quite interesting. Anyway, on the other side of this piece of paper, it's smooth. So that's a great thing because you can do more, um, it's like hot press on one side and cold press on the other. I mean, how good can that be? Excellent. So, uh, where was I? Yes. Um, so this is Arches Lavis Fidelis. I'm going to turn on my light box, I hope. And then you can see, even from where you are, all those miles away, you can see the picture underneath the paper. So I'm just going to quickly trace that. And uh, I won't bore you with that. I'll be back in a tick. Don't go away. Okay, so I'm back. And while I was copying this, I decided, you know, never satisfied, decided to change it a little bit. And I've changed the angle of the hare's head and I've got him looking upwards 
And the idea was that he would be looking upwards towards the moon. And I've, I've, I've drawn in a moon there, but I've got it in the wrong place. So never fear, the eraser is here. So rub that out. And then I'll just draw in another one. And I'm just, as I'm doing this, pondering as to whether or not, I'm going to put it over here, whether I'm going to mask out that circle uh, or whether I'm going to try and paint round it. If I mask it out, it will take a little while to dry. But while it's doing that, I suppose, I could say something else. Um, OK, I'm just looking for my Molotov cocktail here. Here we go. Molotov masking pen. Give it a good thump. And uh, it doesn't have to be too accurate in any way, in any sense of the word, because the moon has a face on it. So it doesn't matter if a bit of paint goes through. But anyway, so there we are, that's that. I won't mask out the snow because I don't believe in that. We do snow by leaving the paper white. While we wait for that to dry, I'll demonstrate the colours I'm going to be using. Um, what I normally do is, uh, I'll try anyway, to... Um, some really old paper in this sketchbook. I do the um, sketch and at the same time, and I didn't think I did it actually this time, but I'll do it now. I uh, make a note on the adjacent page of the colours that I'm using. So this is... This is my ultramarine blue, and I said I would use burnt sienna. That's burnt sienna. And um, the other colour that I said I would use is um, alizarin crimson. So there we are. There's our three basic colours for this painting. And um, you do the duvet test on this. Would I be happy with the duvet cover that had these three colours making up the pattern on it? And if you wouldn't, <coughs> I suggest you change what you're doing. So now I'm going to show you how these colours blend a little bit. So that's alizarin with uh, ultramarine and you can see you get some lovely soft violet colours. And then um, some people are surprised when they see what happens, I was the first time I saw it. I remember David Bellamy demonstrating what happened when you put ultramarine with um, burnt sienna and you get, if you happen to be English and you live in England, you'll know how wonderful those two colours are for reproducing the colour of the landscape. Actually, Britain is pretty similar. Looking out the window today, it's blowing a gale, grey as heck. But then it is the 27th of December, so what else would you expect? So there we are, we've got the colours that we're going to be using. So I'm going to put that aside. And I am not embarrassed to say that I will be using my painting as a reference as we go along. So, right, now what I've got here is simply the outline of the hair, the top part, <coughs> the top part of his body. Um, I'm not entirely happy about that line there. So I'll just alter that a little bit. It's, it doesn't matter because he's going to go into the landscape. <coughs> Excuse me. And the only other indications I've got here are the, the, the lie of the land. There's a hill in the background which comes down here behind him, behind his ear, and then there's another hill up here. You can put them where you like. Try not to have the join smack bang in the middle. And then here in the foreground, I haven't bothered to trace any of this in. We're going to have some grasses and various different things, which we'll do with the rigger. Which brings me to the next subject, which is what brushes are we going to use? Um, I've been drawing this with a 2H pencil, quite a hard pencil. Just felt like that today. Um, brushes, yes, right. Uh, rigger, or um, if you've got one, the sword liner is nice. That makes lovely flicky strokes. Um, just looking, I acquired a set of Zen brushes, Zen art brushes, named after my dog, of course, the other day, the other week, the other month. Um, 
This rigger always disappears. If you watch a lot of my videos, you will probably know that I spend more time looking for this brush than I do any other brush. So it's got fairly long um, hairs, but not tremendously long, not compared to the sword liner, which is obviously much more flicky and expressive. So if you really feel like having a, um, a moment of expressiveness, self-expression, used to do that at school, didn't we? I don't really remember that. I hated that kind of thing. Now, everybody, imagine that you're a tree. Stretch your arms up to the sky and wave them as the breeze catches your branches and... Uh, how embarrassing. I was five years old. Leave me alone. Um, right. I think that's dry enough. Right. So now we're going to start painting and stop rambling. I will wet the sky. with water. There's only one snag with this painting. And um, the thing is, this happens a lot uh, to all of us. I've done the sketch and I, I quite like it, right? And Tamsin said, oh, I like that, that's really nice. And I'm like, oh God, I've got to do it again. You know, it's like the kiss of death. When you actually like your sketch and you think, oh, that wouldn't look bad in a frame. You'll never ever reproduce it. It won't work. I know that. I know it won't. Okay, so I'm going to um, move my palette over. I'm using my messy palette today because I am, because it's the 27th of December. Why not? Um, there's my Lizarin Crimson in a little dish. I've got more than one. Um, the reason I'm using this is because here is this particular um, burnt sienna and I've got another one by a different manufacturer. That's Schmincke. This one, you can't see it, can you? This one is um, Winsor & Newton, I think. Of course, it might not be. It might be something else entirely, but I think it's Winsor & Newton um, and it's a different colour, really. It's a different colour. But that's what happens. Anyway, that's fine. So I'm going to add a little bit of red to that. And then I'm going to come in with uh, that for the, the bottom of the sky here. I paint around the hare's ears. So that's just a kind of little indication of something in the distance. And then the rest I'll do with, um, whoops, with a piece of gash paper and and some ultramarine. Paint around the moon, as you do. And you can um, always lift up your work and, you know, encourage it to mingle and blend and Mix on the paper and then and leave it alone. Uh, yeah, already I can see that this is probably going to take me in a somewhat different direction. I'm going to mix a little bit of um, uh, Lizarin Crimson with some Ultramarine and I'm going to uh, drop that in on the horizon line to indicate trees. I think I probably need a bit more blue. and a bit over here in the distance. And soften that line there. Then um, 
we'll go for the hair. When I did it before, I kept it really, really simple. Oh, I can't do his, um, can't do his ears because they'll run into the sky. That won't do. So I'll just pop some brown in for his head and his body. And I'm not painting this wet in wet. I'm just roughly dashing the colour in. And we'll let that blend a bit and dry. Um, and then what I did before, I got to that point and I thought, oh, I know, I'll just do some branches and some twiggies at the bottom. So, uh, change the colour frequently when you do this kind of thing. Don't just pick up one colour and stick with it. I'm still using just the, the blue and the brown. Like I said, there is no way on the good earth that this is going to look exactly like the original, the sketch. So just, because it reflects your mood, doesn't it? You know, you. You're in a certain mood on a certain day and your muscles are working in a certain way and you're thinking about certain things. And then another day, thinking about other things. Like replacing headlights on your car because you're now in France and drive on the wrong side of the road over here. Somebody said to me not long ago, well, if you didn't like it, why did you move there? And I'm like, I didn't. <laughs> we moved into the EU. We didn't move to France. Anyway, that's another story. So I'm just doing a bit of spatter here onto that. And then we are going to have to go away and leave it to dry, really. Otherwise, I'll end up doing too much. Um, I did have some sort of seed heads here like this. which you can do with a kind of a slightly darker I just like to uh, just play around really with uh, nothing, nothing more exciting than picking up a little bit of dark paint and putting it on the paper and seeing what happens it's quite fun and I think my favourite mixture of colours has got to be this um, uh, the, 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 the ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Okay, so I can't really do much more on that until that's dried. Look how the paint here is moving so beautifully. This is the paper that does this. You've got some very nice graduations here where the blue and the brown are interacting. Same thing here. The blue is granulating with the um, with the brown, and so you're getting texture. And uh, we can come in later again and uh, add to that if we feel that's not enough in the background. And the difference between that and what I've got here, this was done. Um, this is a smooth sketch paper, and it's a completely different effect. It just goes on and sits. So. You will get a totally different effect depending on what kind of paper you use. You can't, uh, you can't um, get away from that. So I'm going to pick up my round brush for a second and um, just smoosh some of this down here a little bit. And when that's completely dry, I will um, put a nice blue shadow in there. where the rabbit is sort of sitting. I think we need a few more slightly darker doobies here. If you haven't got a uh, one of these sword liners, um, Pro Art make them. 
should be able to find them online and try and put a link. Sorry about the noise of the rain in the background. And just put some shadows there to indicate the depth of the snow in the background there. And oh, that's a bit too strong. And over here, and then a couple down here. Maybe uh, I'm going to let that dry and then I'll come back and yeah it's still wet it'll blur into the sky and that'll be a shame don't want the ears to blur and then once that's all dry and I've finished painting that bit I'll add a little bit of ink just at the end so don't go away so while I'm waiting for the painting to dry I just get on with a little bit of crochet I'm making a little blanket here that I can put on my knees when I sit down and have a little rest and Zen wants to get on my lap. Zen used to be called <coughs> Russell, but then we discovered that his name was actually Zen. And um, he, uh, he loves to have a cuddle, but he's a bit bony because he's not a fluffy dog or a soft dog or anything. He's a little bit, um, little bit bony. And uh, my lap is, uh, I wouldn't say I was bony, but um, I, uh, I'm obviously not very comfortable and anyway so I thought if I put a little rug on my lap then he could sit there more comfortably so I've been crocheting this with some yarn that uh, didn't have any other thing to do with so so anyway I think uh, it's probably dry now so I'll just put this aside for a minute you know how addictive crochet is I love to watch Jada in stitches I don't know if you know her she's um She's great. <laughs> She's a lot of fun. And uh, takes your mind off the, the difficulties of whoops, watercolour painting, in fact. So there we are. I'll just put that aside. Nice and bright, isn't it? It's going to be lovely. Um, so there we are. This is now dry. And you can tell it's, <coughs> excuse me, it's faded back quite a lot. But we've got some nice things going on in the background there. And it's time to see whether we can reveal the moon in all its glory. I'm using a rubber or an eraser, as it's known in America, for obvious reasons. This uh, Molotov masking fluid is. Not my favourite. Oh, God. <laughs> so it's going to be a blue moon, because I can't be bothered to try any harder. Yes, well, anyway, that's that. It will be partly covered by the, by the tree. There's going to be a tree coming in there. So next thing, I think I might have a go at the, um, the eye of the hair. So we need a smallish kind of brush. This is a Draw Well Maestro number three. And um, we'll just pick up some black. And put in some eye. And um, Uh, the other thing is that they do have kind of black tips to their ears, don't they? So we can do that. And then we'll put some 
some nice loose grey blue mix in the ears. That's your uh, what do you call it? <sighs> Gosh, ultramarine. And we let that do all sorts of mingling and tingling. And then um, <clears throat> some grey brown. I think this brush is too small. But the nice thing, sometimes the nice thing about using a small brush is that it means you don't put too much paint on. It's very easy. If you can hear sort of various jingling sounds in the background, it's the cats. They've got bells on to stop them from killing the birds, catching the birds. Whoops. And um, so that's what you can hear. I let that dry and then we can put in the um, whiskers and so on and so forth and, sh and put the shape back into the eye, which has run a little bit, but I don't think that matters too much. Um, so we get rid of that brush and we need our um, rigger. <coughs> um, so we need a brownish black. And I'm just going to bring in some some branches. And then I'm going to pretend that there are sort of um, red berries, bundles of red berries. So it could be like a, a rowan or something like that. And then on the other side, over here, do the same thing coming down. Let's check that you can see, coming down from the left-hand side. If you wanted to, I'm not going to do it today, but you could, you could put a, um, an owl or something like that standing on the branch of your tree, you can do all sorts of things. But don't make it too uh, detailed or too but it's, it's often quite nice to just make it go over, over the moon, for example, and we just bring that down. And then again, a few um, red berries. I'm going to mix the red this time with a little bit of burnt sienna. That's just to put some some life over there. And then we go back to the dark brown and um, a few calligraphic marks like that. And then we'll pick up the round brush and um, we'll go back to the ultramarine, a tiny bit of and then I'm going to put a blue, I think I need a bit more blue for that. <coughs> 
so we put a blue shadow there in front of and around the bunny, her uh, hair, sorry, sorry, hair. And then I'm just going to put some more strokes in at the back here, just to strengthen the shadows in the distance there a little bit. Just to give the impression that it's snow. And um, I'm going to have to let that dry for a tick while um, this area dries and I'll come in then and put in the whiskers. Okay, so it's dry enough now for me to come in with a point, uh, point one, point one, oh, it's got the, yes, that's right, point one, um, fine liner. And I'm just going to put some dots for where his whiskers come out and just put some whiskers in. They also tend to have these long, um, I well, I eyebrows, I suppose now, on their eyes like that. And I mean, you can, I've seen it done, you can give the effect of hair standing up in various places on the hair, hair, the hair. So there we are. And um, then you could. Uh, you might want to make it a little bit darker. It's up to you, really. Uh, you could put a little bit more dark on the back of the neck. There. Uh, a little bit under, under here, maybe. Under the eye. And when that dries, that will blend in, so we'll let that do its thing. Um, and then I had on the previous one, I had done some spatter. I've got a little bit of spatter on there from this brush. So we'll just, let's uh, do a bit more of that. That's probably enough bits and pieces. So there we are. The original looked like this. This one looks like that. And oh, I've just noticed really that the moon doesn't show very much. So if we wanted to make that stand out a bit better, we would have to come in with some more blue. Just paint around that. And you could probably lighten that up by putting more white on. But get the gist. So I'm going to let that dry and then when I come back in a second I will be showing you the final painting. Um, I think he needs another white dot in his eye there. I don't know if I can make that work yet. Dear oh dear the weather is not improving. No I'll have to I'll have to wait until that's dry because that's not going to work like that. So we'll just wait till that's dry and then I'll come back and show you the finished painting. And while I'm waiting for it to dry, I'll get on with my crochet. So there we are. I've gone all the way around the outside edge of that now. And next thing to do is to do it in purple. Meanwhile, painting has dried. Never say that I waste time. So I've picked up here a brown felt tip pen. This is a Stabilo 0.4 millimeter brown um, waterproof probably pen and I just want to put a few little sort of 
strokes. I don't think, I think black is probably a bit too strong for, for that. And also just a few lines down here and a few extra dots like this. You can dot around as much as you want, scribble and add perhaps a few little bits. Depends how much detail you feel that you want, doesn't it? And uh, as you can see, I put in his eyebrows and I'm just emphasizing those a little bit. Go around his eye a little bit, make that a little bit clearer. And um, I think probably I'm gonna call it a day. I wouldn't say the moon actually stands out very well there. I wasn't very happy with that masking fluid. It um, wouldn't come off properly, but if I were to give it a good rub, I might be able to get that off. But next time I won't use that type, I'll use a different one. So uh, yeah, so we'll just put a little bit of fluffy fur around his front there and uh, you could add to it and embellish it and all sorts of things, but I think that'll do for now. And uh, um, if you enjoyed that, please do give us a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to turn on uh, notifications and also just check when you go to your settings, just check that you've got um, notifications turned on for any video that you're following, any channel that you're following, because otherwise you won't get them because YouTube needs permission. So uh, yeah, that's it. Day after Boxing Day, something to challenge you perhaps, a little hair in a snowy field. So I'll let you go now and I'll see you again soon, tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, and we're going to start thinking about Valentine's Day soon. Yes, we are. So that's something to look forward to. See you again soon, everybody. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.